Let's get in frame, buddy. All right, there's a lot going on here. There's uh, Shuri from Wakanda. I don't know her real name, but probably neither do you, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Gina Carano, Tim Allen, and the some guy from 21 Pilots. I don't know. I guess it's some teeny bopper band. Basically, they're all attacked by toxic left-wing hate mobs. Um, they all flow from the same idea of a mob pressuring somebody's employment for political purposes. The 21 Pilots guy was attacked because he wouldn't use his platform to talk about BLM or something. Are we free to vote for who we choose, to believe in different religions, to question politically motivated science? What I mean by that is if you're not aware, with uh, academia and scientific research, universities are incredibly left-wing. The science department is no exception. So issues of uh, climate change and uh, flu vaccines are far from settled science. There's a ton of political funding bias but the media and academia are controlled by the same people, so you're only going to get one perspective from the media. And uh, apropos of nothing, the AP, Associated Press, called the election. So we must not question our globalist media masters or else we'll get kicked off YouTube. Of course, they also called the election 20 years ago. Remember that? It was only 20 years ago for Gore, Florida, all that. Hanging chads, dimpled chads. And they were wrong, but, you know, whatever. All this is related. The toxic left-wing incel man, baby, hate mobs! And the social media platforms. They're basically commies, socialists, Marxists, Bolsheviks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if you disagree with them, they will violently attack you and try to get you fired. So regarding pronouns, uh, yes, Pedro and I spoke, and he helped me understand why people were putting them in their bios. He helped me understand because they want to put them in their bios. I didn't know before, but I do now. I won't be putting them in my bio, but good for all you who choose to. I stand against bullying, especially the most vulnerable, and freedom to choose. That is not good enough. The left wing are the... <laughs> Uh, and what if my pronouns were something objectionable? The left wing are the authoritarians. They are all about respecting pronouns and people's identity. Unless you disagree with them. Then you're a Nazi. Uh, excuse me, that isn't how I identify? Isn't that how it works? Uh, apparently the rules only apply when they want them to. I mean, come on, let's, let's be honest, none of this is... Is logical uh, because the rules are based on emotion from re, uh, developmentally disabled children who are bored living in the first world. Uh, but just like it's haram to question the election, the woo flu vaccine, or climate change, or any other darling of the left, it's verboten to even be a conservative, a moderate, a Christian, or just wanting to try to stay out of politics at all. The 21 Pilots guy wanted to stay out of the Bolshevik cancer known as BLM. Gina wanted to stay out of the pronoun nonsense. Taylor Swift wanted to stay out of politics. Shuri from Wakanda was uh, questioning a shot that was rushed through clinical trials. All of these are very reasonable positions to take, but not to the toxic, soy-filled, left-wing hate mob on Twitter. I guess they're channeling George Bush and believe that either you're with us or against us or we'll get you fired. What was that book, Babbitt or something, where he said, I choose not to or I, I, I wish not to or something like that? I don't remember. Um, oh, hey, you're not going to put pronouns in your bio. Well, do, yeah, I don't want to. But, but, but don't you see how that affects adversely affects the trans represent? Yeah, I just don't want to. I just don't want to positively do something. I understand if you ask me to refrain from doing something, you, you know, a negative versus a positive, but you're asking me to positively affirm a belief I don't believe in, I don't partake in that view. Don't I have the first amendment? <laughs> They're mad because I won't put pronouns in my bio to show my support for trans lives. Well, I support all lives. After months of harassing me in every way, I decided to put three very controversial words in my bio. Beep, bop, boo. I'm not against trans lives at all. They need to find less abusive representation. The balls on this chick. Holy cow. Good for her. Uh, you'll, you're not going to work in Hollywood, but I, good for you. You've got, you've got a set of brass balls. Not only must you agree with them 100%, 
You must use your platform to propagate their views. You're nothing more than a puppet whose strings are to be pulled, just as Soros pulls their strings, though most of them don't know it. The lady from the Mary Sue, I forget her name, she's about 400 pounds and she dresses like the Chiquita Banana Lady, you can you can look at the uh, Mary Sue, said that Shuri had a responsibility to use her platform. She did. She expressed her concern about the Wu flu and the vaccines. But that wasn't what the Mary Sue meant. They meant that Shuri must use her platform in lockstep with the Mary Sue's beliefs, which is basically saying that Shuri doesn't have agency to make up her own mind. The Mary Sue article went on for pages because the author knew that that was exactly what she was saying. If you're not a slave to left-wing wacky theories, then you're the enemy. And uh, why do the black community and the left-wing suddenly trust the government? They never used to. Gee, what happened? What happened was the liberal left lost control of the left to the authoritarian billionaire bankers, media, and tech left. Antifa, BLM are on the sides of Soros, Zuckerberg, the media, and most major corporations. If you're the mouthpiece for the media and big tech, then not only are you the bad guys, but you're puppets. They are so good at brainwashing that they convince the left to obey daddy government and to fight against free speech. The left used to fight for free speech and keep the government in check. Now free speech and civil liberties are right-wing Nazi talking points. Congratulations. After 80 years, you made the Germans the good guys. That is how evil the socialists are. They make fascism a palatable alternative. Everyone they call a fascist wants free speech, the Second Amendment, peaceful assembly, and due process. They're the good guys. The difference in the Twitter left is that they are seeking to enforce or compel positive acts of compliance. You must use pronouns. You must spread their ideas. You must be a parrot. We want to be free from compelled acts because that is known as slavery. And we want equal representation on social media so all views are heard. Social media is the new town square. If free speech doesn't apply, then the term is meaningless. Just create your own platforms. Well, the banks won't let us because they're controlled by these same globalists who are terrified of free speech. Even Gina getting a, Gina, yeah, I call her by her first name because we're on a first name basis now, getting a Parler account outraged the Twitter commies because Parler is growing fast, but the left wing isn't on it, so they get nervous and call it all sorts of names, but they're not on it, so how do they know? They don't. They just want control. I'm not on Twitter because I was kicked off over what I said should be done to people who hurt children. Actually, I lost two accounts for that. You'd think I would learn. Um, so apparently they interpreted that as a, a, a extinguishment of life threat. So Parler and Gab are the only options for people like me and a bunch of other people. The left is about control. If they don't control the platform, then they don't want you to have a voice. Because when it comes down to it, They need censorship. They have bad ideas that can't be defended in the open marketplace when they're subject to a rigorous cross-examination. Tim Allen got replaced for good globalist Chris Evans because Tim is vaguely a moderate, I guess. If you're not a globalist, you won't get hired in Hollywood. Politics is downstream from culture. Right now, literal globalists control the media. They control the narrative. They want to get Gina Carano fired from Star Wars. I guess she's the only good thing about that show, which is really over Mando, Mandalorian, really overrated as is. It's it's not that it's that good. or It's just that Star Wars sucks so effing bad. All, uh, when I see kids defending Disney Star Wars, I just want to look at them and go, you you guys were robbed and you don't, you don't, you don't know how good Star Wars was. And it's like, yeah, well, you can, you can watch it and, the original trilogy actually does hold up pretty well in, firm, in terms of tech and storyline and all that. But you didn't, you got to watch it in the environment of when uh, media, movies ruled the world more so back then. And I'm not just talking about the 70s, I'm talking about up in the 80s, even the 90s, because there were fewer distractions. As TV got better and better, and more and more channels, it, it diffused the, it spread out. Um, the force that any one show could have. Like a show like, what was it, Dynasty, where the, it was all a dream sequence? Like, 
that was con- people knew about shows they like Dynasty up until I don't know when the '90s when the networks just spread. They had so many shows that everyone was on a different page. But when Star Wars and Indiana Jones and those kind of things were coming out in the '70s and '80s, they had a huge cultural impact. When people went to concerts before cell phones, concert was like a magical, I don't know, uh, tribe tribal uh, energy that it's hard to get across to people who go to concerts now with their cell phones and record them and they live stream it. It's just, it's different. It's just different. You can't understand, like, if you didn't live back then. Just like my generation can't understand how people, you know, would sit around and play piano and play violin and harmonica and, like, you were your own entertainment or you listen to a record or you have a player piano or something. It's like a different culture. Movies were magic back then in a way that they will never be again. In fact, the movie industry might I don't know. I don't think it's going to die, but it's headed for... If you get rid of theaters... I'm trying to talk to these two guys who know about it. I'm trying to get an interview with them. Um, if you get rid of theaters, what effect will that have on the cultural impact of, of movies? Movies at one time were magic. And if you... You know, you're in Wonder Woman... Where I was talking to them about Wonder Woman 1984 because, okay, I can watch it on HBO on my, my tablet. That's not the same... Um, and I, I mean, like, I know guys with home theater systems, projector systems and good sound systems. It's like, it's pretty good. It's, you know, it's almost the same. It's not the same in terms of psychology because you're not getting in a car, driving to a theater, getting popcorn, sitting down, and you're not on your phone. The psychology is different. When you're at home and even you got people watching it together, you're all talking. You're on, like some people are on their phone. You're half paying attention. It's different in a theater. And actually, Matt Jarbo had a, um, a video about movie theaters, the, the like the psychology of movie theaters a year ago. Um, it was very interesting. Uh, he's not, well, I was going to say he's not all bad, but he's mostly bad. He's, it's not that he's, uh, I don't know. When you look like that, things are not kind of, oh, sh- I'm not supposed to talk about other people on YouTube. Sorry, sorry, don't report me. All right, guys, I will see you all next episode.